I am Andrew Osio for the Expression College for the Digital Arts and this demonstration is how to make a bridge with N-Cloth. N-Cloth is something fairly new to Maya, it's kind of being revolutionary. It's quite a powerful simulation engine, but uh, like everything that's tied into Maya, you can mix it with other uh, modeling, animation, and simulation tools to get even more out of it. And I'm going to show you a simple trick on how to do that today. So I'm going to take a regular polygon grid here and I'm just going to translate it 0.5 degrees over there and I'm doing go duplicate it and take it negative 5 degrees over here and um, this is kind of like the beginning of it. I usually like to make sure that my history is deleted first it's kind of an, an important issue and it wouldn't be a bad idea to freeze the transforms although that isn't critical um, I'm going to take these two objects now and uh, go to the end dynamics menu and under end mesh we're going to create end cloth for both of them and uh, end cloth like so many of the newer um, dynamics is built in gravity so we don't have to worry about that we do have to pin the uh, cloth in certain places so if this is a bridge it's going to be pinned at the two ends so I'm going to select the vertices at one end and use what's called the transform constraint which essentially allows these vertices to be only keyframed and moved. They can only be transformed manually. Otherwise, they're kind of pinned. It's a great way to kind of pin your end cloth geometry to a static location. So transform on both sides like that. And we're just going to run our animation. We'll do a quick run on that. Okay, that's pretty standard stuff. Let's just go uh, wireframe with shaded so we can see what we're doing here. And then there's another nifty little constraint, which is uh, weld adjacent borders. And to do this, I need to go to component mode, which I usually will use the F9 for, but since I am doing a uh, Camtasia, I can't do that. So um, there is an alternate way. We can just go to the component mode selection over here and select vertices this way. So I'm just selecting all the vertices on each side and using what we call a weld adjacent borders function. Now if I run the simulation now, these two pieces of end cloth will effectively simulate as one, as if they're glued together. Now you can play around with that glue function uh, and that constraint. We can just actually go to the channel box and look at that third constraint and actually we can enable it. So there's lots of ways you can do it by the way. You can take the strength down and make it a really weak uh, glue or a really weak strength and so that can get things to rip apart that way <clears throat> and let's just say we're going to let it run for about 120 frames and at the 120 frames we're just going to let that constraint break so we're going to just disable it so on frame 121 we'll set it to off I'm going to do this a little backwards, I guess. And then we're just going to go backwards to frame 120 and set it on. So at frame 120, this constraint is enabled and the two pieces are glued together. At 121, it's going to turn off and we'll see what we get. So we get this effect and break apart. That nice little pinch there is just kind of a, a, a freebie that you sometimes get from N-Cloth. It has to do, it's random somewhat, it has to do with how much tension is in the vertices at any one given time. And it, it's some random, it almost varies. But it's actually quite cool to kind of get that for free. Uh, it kind of simulates some extra things. So we've kind of got a nice little N-Cloth simulation of a bridge breaking. Now we're going to use N-Cloth not as a simulation in itself, but we're going to use it to drive another one. And it's going to become what we call a wrap object and uh, deform a group of objects. So I'm just going to take a cube here and we're going to take that cube and scale it down to a smaller size. Say about a tenth of a grid unit in both directions. So it's about the same size as the grid. In fact, we're going to take it down just a little smaller than that, 0 0.08. And I'll make it the same length in the z direction. So 
I'm going to make these long strips, maybe a little bit smaller in the y direction, so it looks like planks. Okay. And then we're just going to drag it over here. So I'm going to basically put a plank where every strip of polygons on the end cloth is. And I'm just going to not guess on the number. I can be a little more precise. If I snap to vertice here, I know that's 0 0.9. I know that's uh, 1, so I need half of that. So I need 0.95. So that's kind of right in the middle. As you can see, it wasn't by accident. I actually chose a scale factor that's a little smaller than the faces of the end cloth. And then I'm just going to use my duplicate special tool to make a, a lot of copies of that. So I need to travel in the x direction negatively, one tenth of a grid unit. And I need uh, 19 copies. And it's going to be in the negative direction, of course. So I need to do that. Let's just test it out. That's perfect. So I've kind of like built a really quick bridge. So I have my objects. And all I really need to do now is get the end cloth to work as a wrap uh, deformer. The wrap deformers are found under the animation uh, menu. <coughs> and uh, like I said, this is the, one of the real powerful things about end cloth is it responds like everything else uh, in Maya. It's just another piece of geometry that you can plug into something else. So to make it a wrap deformer, we have to select the objects that are going to be deformed by that end cloth, like so. And then we're going to select the end cloth plane itself. Make sure I got the right one. And then under deformers, select wrap. That's pretty much all we need to do there. And the same thing we're going to do over here. We're just going to shift select these planks over here. And then control sh uh, select in the outliner the end cloth plane and use another wrap deformer there. So that's basically it. Let's do a, a quick run on it. Mm, let's see if it's going to work. A couple of seconds and it breaks apart. So that's great, but the end cloth is still there, so our illusion is somewhat broken. So let's just take the end cloths themselves and hide them, and they will still do their end cloth business but um, they're not going to be seen or rendered. So now we just have a regular um, bridge and it's going to break apart. And so it's an easy way to do a simulation using end cloth. Now the nice thing about this is the end cloth can be extremely simple shape but the wrap that objects that it actually moves can be very very complex. In other words this bridge could be a lot more complex than uh, 10 polygon uh, cubes. It could be a lot more complex, but it still kind of gets that nice same effect. So that's one way that you can use end cloth to do something more than just uh, clothing.